Hello, hello, and uh, welcome to another GIMP tutorial. My name is Eli. I am grateful that you can join me on a, another tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be covering uh, an electricity slash lightning effect. Um, this is something I did for someone else, and there was a bit involved in this, but I'm going to go over the main um, elements and we can create something to a similar effect. So without further ado, um, it's nice to have a lightning in the background and a cutout. Now, for this particular eagle, I just uh, I just searched for a, um, a PNG file um, on Google and found this. So didn't have to cut it out. That saved me a bit of work. Okay, um, there's a, a few simple steps here. Now, one thing you may have noticed with a lot of my tutorials, I I don't have a planned uh, script that I follow, and I don't sit there uh, explaining every single tool this does this and this does this and this does this as, as many tutorials do because although that's important it's good to know what the tools do the most important thing with photoshopping is is the method because you can learn what all the tools do and I remember when I was learning all of this I knew what all the tools did at least I was trying to learn what all the tools did but then how do you combine them all to achieve the end process and the only way to learn that is to is to go through the process to watch people work. And sometimes it's even helpful to watch people make mistakes um, because you learn the methodology by watching the whole process. So my tutorials might be a little bit different to some of the other things you see. You might see some mistakes, but that's all part of the process. Now, there's a really handy way to get an outline of all the different elements in a image such as this. The effect, well, the tool that we're gonna use is under edge detect, image gradient. Okay, that's good. That's what we want. Now, I wanna to stick to some very obvious outlines and that isn't, doing the job that I want. There's a lot of gray in there still, so I just want the black and the white. Of course, to do that, we the, the levels can fix that because I can darken the dark and brighten up the light. Okay, there we go. Now, another thing I can do here is uh, my favorite. I use this on so many videos, color to alpha layer, and that will turn the black part into transparency. There we go. Now I've just duplicated that layer for some thickness. I wanna see what this does. Okay, I might not do that. And I might just add a little bit more, uh, a little bit too late for that. I was thinking of adding a little bit more black to that, but that's all right. Okay. So um, I'm going to try and copy that lightning effect on this. And uh, the way to do that will be to add some drop shadow, will you believe it or not? But except it's not going to be shadow, it's going to be a light. Um, so if I say. Uh, just wondering whether to go drop shadow legacy or let's go with legacy. The reason why I go for legacy sometimes is because it it generates the result in its own layer and sometimes that's handy. So no offset, keep that to zero, zero. And yeah, we can have some blur. Um, of course, the resulting color should be either white or the blue color that you see there, but we'll start with white. Let's just see how this 
kind of looks okay. We're getting a bit of a thing, smidgen there. That's good. Um, for the purposes of this, I might, yep, all right, I'll merge it down. And now I will do that again. Actually, now I will use the, you'll see the difference, the drop shadow, the, the new drop shadow tool. Uh, because it allows you to see the preview and that is super handy. Okay, I'm going to pick blue because I want it to be the same blue that is in that lightning. Okay, that'll do. And we want it to be in the center, so I'm going to put that in zero, zero, so it's not offset. Okay, that'll do. And I'm going to grow that because we want it to be stronger and more intense. There we go. So I'm not, not so much, but just a little bit of that. And you see where that's going. Now, the next part is really all about placement. Now, you can see I should have tweaked the, the levels a little bit more to hide some of this noise that we're getting in the middle. Um, of course, I can just, um, you know, delete that, but I can just do that, but yeah. In any case, um, now positioning is important and crucial here. If I put it around, you, you know, it's a good idea to try to match. You can see I'm trying to match this wing with those sparks there. And uh, the, for the ones that don't really match, I can move these to go to the tail as such. And, you know, if you really want, you can delete certain parts of, of that too, so that it's not. Overbearing on the, um, and not over the top. Um, but yeah, so, you know, Add a little bit of cloud to that and a little bit of what not. Um, uh, I, I created a lightsaber with the exact same effect. So you can see where, where this is going. Um, super easy to do. I hope you picked up a, a thing or two from this. Uh, but yeah, we, if you add some cloud texture to it and some um, a few other things, this glow here and in the center uh, I, I achieved that simply by, look, I'm just going to create a new from visible so it's all flattened on one layer. Um, dodge tool. Dodge, highlights, and, you know, you can create bright spots like that. Okay? So that's how that was achieved. Uh, but, yeah, with a little bit of cloud texture in the back, and it helps. So I hope that was... Um, something uh got a comment the other day um saying eli why don't you um do any more gimp tutorials it's not for lack of not wanting to it's just um if you have any ideas or anything you'd like to know just please ask i enjoy doing these i enjoy um sharing not uh, knowledge i enjoy the creativity of it so always happy to do these sorts of things i'll see you all next time thanks for watching